Hi friends, and welcome back to my training series. I hope everything's well with you. I hope you're hanging in there. For me, it was a rough one this week for me and the family. Um, after months of slow decline and kidney failure, uh, on Friday afternoon, our family said goodbye to our 15-year-old dog, Riley. Uh, over 15 years, a lot happened in our family, and uh, we, will, we will really miss her. Training-wise, it was a light week, uh, so even though I did do my running, I wasn't very focused on it. But let's get into this week's training, and, and uh, then later I'll get into some questions. As usual for my schedule, Monday was a rest day. This whole week was a recovery week, as I'll soon be building towards a 50 mile or towards the end of March. On Tuesday, I was assigned a 40 to 45 minute really easy run, and it had snowed the night before, and I wasn't really in the mood for snow running, so I took the opportunity to do my easy run inside on the treadmill, and I watched some YouTube. In the afternoon after work, I did my yoga class via Zoom. On Wednesday, I was assigned an approximately 80-minute easy run with some fart licks. The run felt pretty good, and the trails were really wet from the melt of the day before snow. And in the afternoon after work, I did my core strength workout. And I'm so happy to have these on my schedule so to sort of keep me motivated, to keep me doing them. Uh, it's just I really do think it's helping me get stronger. On Thursday, I was assigned another 40 to 45 minute super easy run. And so I went down to the water treatment plant near my house and ran a loop around it and along some of the rivers there. It's a really beautiful area and I saw a couple eagles. It was a nice run. On Friday, due to the lower intensity week, Friday was another rest day, celebrating and loving and saying goodbye to our family dog, Riley. On Saturday, I was assigned a two hour long run and given the sadness, I thought it would be more fun to run with friends. So I went out with Tony and Mike and Kendall and Mark and we ran at Lord Hill Regional Park. I ended up with two hours of running, 8.7 miles and about 1,600 feet of gain. And then finally on Sunday, I was assigned a one hour easy run. It was raining and cold outside, about 37 degrees. And so I put on a rain jacket and did my one hour local easy road loop. Good morning, Eagle. Along the way, I saw a bald eagle and there's some snow mixed in with the rain too. So I was really happy to get it done. So overall, it was a lighter training week. I did 28.1 miles and about five hours and 44 minutes total. Um, but it was also a really difficult week and my mind really wasn't very much on the running. Um, okay, well anyway, let's shift gears into the questions. I got a lot this week. Uh, and so thank you to everybody for asking uh, and sharing your thoughts. In last week's video, I mentioned that I had run the Fort E.B. Kettles Trail Marathon. And this last week, I published a video on the YouTube channel, a video of that run. And a commenter there asked if I would show the medal because in the video I failed to. So this is the finisher award from the Fort E.B. Kettles Trail Run. These laser cut finisher awards are really cool. So lightweight and just really pretty. And I, yeah, I like the design of the logo too. All right, so this question is asking if my coach and I set weekly elevation goals. You know, actually we don't. Uh, historically, the way that my coach and I have worked together, I just get assigned time and, dis time and or distance, um, not and maybe some sort of intensity, like if it's an intervals thing or if it's meant to be an easy run. Uh, sometimes I'll, we'll be assigned hiking, uh, which can imply, you know, going after some hills. But I, we don't really have elevation goals specifically. But I think it's a good idea. I think other runners I've seen post their running have talked about having sort of elevation assignments. Uh, so I do think it's a good idea. Uh, another coaching related question. Is it better to have a local coach versus a remote coach? 
you know, and, and in my experience, uh, having a coach set the parameters for what routes, you know, in terms of like time versus distance and maybe intensity, just having those parameters has been fine for me. Uh, most of the runners that I know also have coaches that aren't local to them. And my coach and myself have always been in different regions too, for the most part. So, um, you know, I think that really the more important things for looking for in a coach are if they're a good fit for you personally, like personality wise, uh, somebody whose style you like, who respects you in your time and motivates you how you want to be motivated. I think those things are more important than if the coach knows your actual local trails. So, um, that's my take on that. I do think coaching is a great thing to use if you have, if you can, uh, fit that into your lifestyle. Um, to me, it's been really great to work with a coach. So I'm glad you're asking about it. Okay. Let's talk about gear. This question is asking about how I approach layering for races with so much temperatures variation. You know, most of the time, all the time during long runs, I will be carrying some, uh, extra layers just sort of to put on at any moment. So I'll always carry with me like a Patagonia Houdini jacket. Uh, that way I can slip that on anytime I need to, if it's windy or if the temperature drops. Um, but otherwise I pretty much use drop bags at aid stations the, to help me change layers or bring additional things for the nighttime. So like if I'm heading into the evening, I'll probably put on a, a warmer long sleeve and maybe I'll bring a second long sleeve in my pack just in case it gets even colder overnight. And I'll also, often have and a lot of times during the race have a rain jacket with me in addition to the houdini windbreaker so um sort of with the jacket and an extra layer and going through the night in a uh, a long sleeve um, i'm usually kind of ready for any temperature that i'm going to encounter and i really do recommend merino wool i find that it's very warm and lightweight but it also retains warmth if it gets wet so um uh, merino wool can be expensive, but I have some merino wool shirts that I've been using for years, and um, I've found them to be a great investment. Okay, another gear question. What are the straws on my flasks? Uh, so the bottles that I use most are from Hydra Pack. They're the Ultra Flask Speed 600 milliliter soft flasks. I really do like the straws. It's so easy to be able to uh, drink from them without having to really crane my neck down to the bottle or pull the bottle out. Um, and then also the, those bottles that I use have the flip top tops. Uh, it makes it easier to refill at aid stations. And so I put the link in the description below. Okay, Cameron Mueller, who's also a channel member. Thank you very much, Cameron. Watched my members only video of my packing for the Tahoe 200. And so he asked what tape I was using for the drop bags. First, I'll tell you that uh, the drop bags I'm using are from High Desert Drop Bags. I love them because they're really easy to pack. They're easy to carry and they're easy to find at an aid station when you're looking at a pile or rows of, of many, many drop bags. Uh, and so um, they have a little spot uh, on the edge, edge, like a little rubberized thing where you can put your information. And so I use 3M white duct tape uh, to put my name and information, bib number and that sort of stuff there. Um, I've purchased it at Lowe's um, and also from Amazon. And so I'm going to put the link to the description uh, link in the description for both the drop bags and the tape. If you buy from Amazon with my link, I'll get a small commission. Okay. Uh, Jack asks if I'm going to be doing any live streaming on Twitch again. Well, I love that you are asking this question. <laughs> I love that you would want me to. I had done a few live streams in the past uh, as I was doing some editing, partly because some of the professional work I was doing was sort of live stream adjacent. And so it was good practice to be thinking about, but also I was having fun doing it and uh, I haven't in a while. Um, I do need to do some gear switching around, I think, to really optimize that again. But since you're interested, I will uh, try to do that more uh, when I have a video that I'm editing. So, so it's nice to know that somebody's interested. All right, Wayne's asking if I have thought about running outside the US. Well, this year I am planning to run two ultras in Canada, the Canadian Death Race in August and the Divide 200 in September. Um, but I really would like to expand out to other countries and continents and other parts of the world. Uh, New Zealand, in a, a 200 miler in New Zealand would be incredible. Uh, but this is really a time and money problem. So um, yeah, I would love to. So we shall see if, if the things align. And speaking of running outside the U.S., Jan asked me on Instagram if the Swiss Peaks 660 was interesting to me. Now, I haven't actually heard of the 660 distance, but I did watch and I was enthralled by Jeff Pelletier's video of his running the Swiss Peaks 360. 
this thing does interest me, but it also scares me. I mean, appropriately, these things look incredibly hard. Um, and this is also a time and money problem. I think I would like to go tackle a European Ultra sometime, but I, at this point, I can't even consider a trip like that. It's just not an option right now. All right, and lastly, Matteo asks me if there's a runner who has inspired me. And just reading through the rest of your message, uh, Matteo, I'll just say thank you for saying my name alongside those giants. I was lucky to get to meet Michele Groglia during the Cocodona 250 in 2021, and I loved reading his book, Ultra. Um, I put links below, by the way, to an interview that Michele Groglia did with the Off the Couch podcast. Uh, it was a two-parter. I loved that that podcast interview, so um, it really moved me, and I recommend you listening. I also put a link to his book in the description below as well. So to answer your question, when I was getting started on ultra running, I was actually really inspired by the runner Ben Light. Uh, I was following him. Inst- I was following him on Instagram at the time, and I was watching his early 200 mile finishes. Uh, and then sometimes I would see him on YouTube, and I would pause and make careful notes of the gear choices he was making. Uh, I learned a lot from him, and he was just somehow he made it feel possible to me. And uh, and he, even at the time, Ben would be running in these button-up shirts, like a collared button-up shirts. And I even emulated that. I wanted so bad to be a runner like Ben Light. Uh, so yeah, he was a huge inspiration to me. And you know, they say that you should never meet your heroes, but it has been really nice to get to know Ben as a friend and often get to see him at events and be able to chat with him. Um, so uh, there were a lot of other runners that back in the day who were inspiring me, but I think Ben Light was definitely one of the main sparks along my journey. Okay, if you're still here, thank you. I know that was a lot. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your questions. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions that you would like me to answer in an f- upcoming video, please put them in the comments below. And uh, a big thank you to the channel members who donate extra every month. I do appreciate that. It means a lot to me. And everybody else, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. This has been a tough week for me, and I've been kind of nervous about how I was going to try to be bubbly and smiley in a YouTube video today. Anyway, I can't cry on camera during this video. Um, Thank you all for watching. I really hope you have a good week ahead and I'll see you next week.